How to avoid the pitfalls with converting to LED lights in your RV. Hello everyone, this is Eric Stark with the Smart RVer Podcast, delivering the smarts you need to enjoy the freedom of the RV lifestyle without the fear of breaking down. So today we're going to cover some ground about LED lights. And we're going to talk about RV shows and backup cameras. So we got a lot of things we're going to discuss today that should be very interesting to you as the RVer. So now let's talk about living the RV life and checking out local RV shows. Yeah. So Alexis, have you been to an RV show? I have. I have been to one. It's very interesting. So I know everything, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but um, yeah, I enjoyed being there. It's nice to see all the the models that they have and they kind of show you around Mm -hmm. so you not only see new rvs you see all the stuff that's being sold for rvs yeah exactly um they have so many accessories um both for camping and rv you know primarily related so it's just fun to see what upgrades you can do to your rv if you're a real seasoned rv or if you're just starting out um there's something for everyone there Mm -hmm. so rv shows can be very informative yes you know, even if you're not looking for an RV, looking for a new RV, it's worthwhile going to one just to check it out. You know, mm-hmm. might might become a thing you'd want to do more often, but at least go to one if you haven't been to one. Yeah. Check out the new RVs. It's going to get your uh, creative juices flowing. Think about your RV. Maybe you're not going to buy a new one, but how you can upgrade. Yeah. See yeah. some of the new stuff. Definitely can help you stay in touch with some newer things. It's not a catch-all for all new things. There's mm-hmm. just a lot of stuff there. It's kind of swap me driven in some ways yeah you know, people selling <laughs> sunglasses and mm-hmm. t-shirts and goofy stuff and mm-hmm. and then there's always like you'll see people walking around because everybody bought this one thing i remember one i, I was at and everybody had cord reels oh, funny the guy sold a million of them he's like man how many times are people going to use this once yeah. twice <laughs> some of them buy three of them you know i buy three and get them for whatever a piece oh know? boy <laughs> so a lot can happen there now i remember being at one show and uh yeah, I was a vendor there, and that's where the Camco RhinoFlex hoses were basically born. Wow. Not because they thought of it. Someone else did, but the guy kept sending everybody to the Camco booth to get their fittings. And, of course, Camco said, hmm, there's a lot of these hoses moving. Let's go ahead and uh, make this hose. All right. Shortly after that, boom. <laughs> so that's how it works in the real world. <laughs> so if you don't get knocked off, you can knock someone else off. <laughs> So there's a lot of shows every year. This year for 2023, I believe there's 80 shows that will be on the yes. smartrvier.com. So if yes. you're interested in going, you can go to our website, the smartrvier.com. Mm-hmm. Alexis has compiled the list. Yep. So you can check it out. It's complete and thorough and all in one place. You don't have to go scavenging through the internet. That's right. <laughs> all right. So now that's on your list for the next thing to do, going to an RV show. But now let's talk about staying on the road and how to avoid the pitfalls when converting to LED lights. Consumers, we've experienced worldwide changes in lighting. You know, whether it's an RV, a a residential application, commercial or marine, anywhere there's a light bulb that can be found, we're having to change them because there's something revolutionary, new that's coming out. So with each new type of light bulb, some good comes with it and some bad comes with it. So with each new type of light bulb also comes new hype and there's a need to push it on society. Everybody's got to get this bulb. You got to make the switch. You know, you're going to be left in the dark. (laughs) No pun intended. (laughs) If you don't get this new form of light, you won't have any future. You know, it's an interesting thing because it's really inaccurate in a lot of ways, but there's a lot of pros and cons, as I said. But let's do a little history of the light bulb Yeah, it sounds real exciting, doesn't it? Talk about (laughs) light bulbs. So you have to understand how things have come along and where we're at. But the incandescent bulbs, they've been around for decades. You know, they're still used in so many applications today, including RVs. But they're deemed inefficient when it comes to power consumption because they take a higher wattage to produce a light, you know, a brighter light. If the, the brighter the light you want, the higher the wattage. So it consumes more power. So they can be inefficient that way. Then there's the halogen bulb, which, you know, they're known for being much brighter. That's kind of like the cat's meow and bright bulbs, or it used to be. But they'd use a lot more power, and they'd burn a lot hotter. 
So that reminds me of years ago when I owned another business called AZ Products. We had a light that we put together. It's called the Bright Light. So this was a little ring, aluminum ring that we had made, and it would go in the base of an 1141 type light fixture or one that took a 1003. Mm -hmm. And this bulb would slide in there. The ring would hold the bulb in place and hold it into the fixture, and it'd be at least 10 times lighter than an 1141 bulb. It wow. worked great. It just used more electricity or more battery power, mm -hmm. and it ran hotter. But it still became a bright light because there was no alternative back then. It worked, you know, but those days are gone. Yeah. That bulb is, you know, history. I still have one, though, in the original packaging. Oh, cool. Here in my antique emporium. <laughs> yeah. About three things. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Halogen bulbs had their place, and they still can in some applications, but everything's changes what we're getting into. So fluorescent tubes, they've had a, you know, they've been an excellent alternative to incandescent bulbs, and especially when you have to light up a lot of area, keep the heat down, and it's not a flood that's coming right on you. Mm -hmm. So they work great. You know, most businesses have them. Almost every business in the world is going to have fluorescent tubes in it, right. you know, for lighting. And then comes along the compact fluorescent bulb, the CFLs. They are efficient, and they are also bulky, and they're also very ugly. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? The one little spiral bulb on it, right. you know, that, hey, this thing's great. You got to have these, you know. <laughs> um, very unique size. They looked horrible in most light fixtures that had an exposed bulb, and sometimes that's all you could get, and they are just horrible looking. And they also contained mercury, which mm -hmm. mercury we know is, is is horrible for the environment. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's okay. It's, you know, whatever. <laughs> you can go down that road. <laughs> so they're ugly and they're not dimmable. So the CFLs pretty much are lame. So that brings us to the LED lights, kind of the newest thing. Now, LED light bulbs have been around for a long time and, you know, the smaller applications. But they just didn't hit mainstream until... <clears throat> Maybe, I don't know, eight years ago, 10 years ago. It's been a while because it took a long time for them to become mainstream, get all the kinks worked out of them. Yeah, I remember in the 90s, they were, or the early 2000s, they were around. And, um, yeah, they just didn't have, you couldn't get them. They were more expensive, harder to find. The quality wasn't there. But today, the quality is there in the LED bulbs, just the bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> So they produce more light with less energy, and they come in a lot of different sizes and types, so that makes them more usable, more user-friendly. But they cost more per bulb, and sometimes it's going to pay for themselves pretty quickly, and sometimes it's not, depending on the application and how you'll go about switching to LED. Right. So, you know, different applications, certainly going to be different. So incandescent and halogen bulbs are going to be banned in August of 2023. That's crazy. So that's a big thing, you know, and I think that's been in the works for a long time. It's been like a 10-year plan or something. Wow. So that van will vary state by state. So mm -hmm. depending on where you live, it might affect you in different ways. And so the bulbs, some bulbs might be allowed, some not. Yeah. But it's still going to be a major blow to the incandescent halogen bulb sure. market. Mm -hmm. So it's another way to force you into the LEDs. <laughs> Which, you know, the bulb in itself is okay. We're going to get to all that. Really what this is all about is what we're leading up to here. A little history doesn't help, though. <laughs> so LED bulbs are very popular with RVs because they draw so much less compared to the incandescent bulb. Mm. It's amazing. So when you're on battery power, you need to conserve as much battery power as possible. So if you're out camping, you're off the grid, you're relying on those batteries, you don't want your lights to consume it or you're not turning on your lights at night because you don't want to waste any power. Mm -hmm. So it can really, you know, change how much power you use per day or how much battery you use per day. So to give you an example of power savings with um, an incandescent 1141 bulb versus a LED 1141 bulb. So the incandescent bulb well, let's say is 18 watts. That's kind of the average, 18 watts. It's going to use 1.6 amp hours per hour. And then the 1141 LED bulb is 2 watts, and it's going to use 0.24 amp hours. Oh, wow. 
significant difference. It's huge. So that's 1.6 with an incandescent bulb compared to 0.24 with an LED bulb. Wow. That's 0.24. So that's a lot less. Yeah, that's basically 1.3 less. Oh, yeah. Amp hours. That's a lot, mm -hmm. especially for just one bulb. So that number is going to vary, obviously, depending on what bulbs are in your RV, how many you use, how many are on all the time. So that you have to calculate, get an idea for how much battery power you're going to use each day. But the point is, it draws a lot less. So how does that translate into cash savings or does it? <laughs> well, it really depends on how much you pay for the new LED bulb or bulbs and what kilowatt hour, you know, cost you're paying from the electric company. So you could maybe save a buck per bulb a year. It depends. You know, this is related to an RV, so it's a little harder to calculate because you're using the battery and your converter is recharging the battery. So yeah. it's a little harder to calculate, but, you know, you can still do it. Um, you can figure that out by bulb, what you'd save if they're on all the time and, you know, the converter is always running type of thing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's going to be savings, but really in an RV, it's probably, that probably doesn't matter as much as saving the battery. You know, if you save $12 per year in your RV, who cares? It's right. really not that much. Right. You know, it's two cups of coffee. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? Two cups of coffee. Easily, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or one cup, depending on where you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now, here's where things get different. If you're going to, or let's talk about replacing the fixtures with LED bulbs. So that would be a new light fixture that comes with an LED bulb built into the fixture. So in other words, the bulb is not replaceable. So if that fixture costs you 60 bucks, your gain will be brighter lights. And any saving in cash probably won't come for three to four years. Oh, okay. In an RV, you might never really see it because you don't use it enough. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're buying it to gain light and battery power, but you're not really going to ever see a return on that, especially if you paid 60 bucks for one fixture and then you buy two, three, four or more, you know? Right. Even if it's $30, you're really not ever going to see it. Mm -hmm. So that's because the fixture cost is much more than the single bulb. So you have to think about the numbers here and how you're calculated. Um, so everything I do is based on you know, an average retail price. And so you have to kind of look at it that way if you're doing any research into this. For an RV, it's probably not even worth researching for your house or a business, different story. Yeah. So here's kind of the, the real problem or the real rub with buying a fixture with an LED light bulb built into it. So it's non-replaceable. The light is part of the fixture. Mm -hmm. So if the fixture fails, it has to be replaced, right? That's common sense. It's going to, something inside of it, one of the electronics is going to fail. The light won't work properly. Might come on and flash and flicker, or only half of the LED light strip comes on because one half of the fixture has gone bad. You know, the drivers for the LED bulbs have failed. And so now you have to replace the fixture. So if you have to replace the fixture, now you've just doubled the cost. Mm -hmm. And these fixtures, what I'm seeing or we're seeing in our stores, they're not lasting for 10, 15 years. They're lasting for, you know, three years, two years, okay. four years. <laughs> so brand new RVs are coming out with LED ball or LED lights and fixtures. And people are coming in with brand new lights, needing them replaced. They're not even out on the market yet. That style of light. <laughs> That's how quick is happening mm -hmm. so it doubles the time to break even if you ever will so now you're asking are led light fixtures failing yes they are as i just said we're seeing them in the store and so in that so the newer L rvs come with the led light fixtures so they're starting to come in they're failing pretty early because incandescent fixtures pretty much never failed I mean, we get people coming in with the Sunray brand light fixtures looking for a replacement. The Sunray went out of business in the 90s. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that says how long they last. Mm -hmm. People come in with bargeman lights that have been, you know, the lens hasn't been made for 10 years. That's how long they last, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So they, you know, they, they last where these new LED ones aren't. 
So it's not necessarily the bulb that fails, it's just the electronics around it. And residential LED lights are the same way too. I know my home, every LED light we replaced two years ago, we bought the house, we've replaced again. And they all fail the pretty much the same way. Wow. You know? <laughs> so it's happening. I talk to other people, it's the same thing. So the LED light bulbs are really good if you can just do an LED light bulb. So if you have to replace the fixture and you go with an LED light that's built into it, non-replaceable bulb, that one might come back and bite you. Mm -hmm. That one might be a little less cost effective. Right. But that's what everything's going to, you know? So if you're, so if you, you know, you look at this, we really don't have a choice. Yeah. It's changing, you know, the market's shifting. So as L or incandescent bulbs get outlawed, and they aren't available, then then the fixtures are going to become less and less and less. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to be much harder to buy anything but a new fixture with an LED light strip built into it. And, you know, manufacturers, you know, they they don't want their stuff to last forever. Not anymore. They used to. Yeah. <laughs> so it's about money. So they have to sell this stuff, resell it, you know, otherwise they're going to go out of business. Mm -hmm. So their profits drop all that. You know, they're making a lot of money now in the the changeover, but eventually it levels off and they can't have that. And we know that. I think everybody understands that. That's just how it works. So the LED is a, a, a inexpensive power source to some degree, you know, to sometimes you don't see that money for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, especially in outside the RV, like I said, in the RV is not a problem. <clears throat> so also just so this is, out there, this is not about green energy or saving energy to save the planet. This is just the reality of the light bulbs. Yeah. <laughs> None of that's my concern. <laughs> Bad as that may sound, that's not what I'm talking about today. It's just LED bulbs. So if you're going to do an upgrade in your RV and switch to LED bulbs, maybe you've already done it. Maybe you haven't. Um, maybe you've done a few lights, but you really want to do them all now. Because sometimes it's one of those things you step into because, you know, bulbs aren't that uh you know they're not inexpensive so if you buy a new fixture i recommend getting fixtures that come with led bulbs in them that can be replaced yes because that way if the fixture fails which it probably won't it'll be the bulb you can just replace <laughs> the bulb yeah because even led bulbs do fail they don't always last like they're supposed to right and you know even if they have a five-year warranty or something on them where do you take the bulb after you buy it? <laughs> exactly. Who has the receipt? Who knows? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Who keeps track of that? I mean, some people might, and that's good for them, but <laughs> other people aren't, you know? Receipt you save for a day to make sure it works. And after it works, yep. you throw it away. Mm -hmm. So buy fixtures that take a twist-in bulb, you know, that, that like incandescence used to be. If you have fixtures like that, just put in LED bulbs. You know, it might be a little bit more for the bulbs, you know, and you start buying them all, but you have better fixtures. This is one of these things where older stuff is actually good. We see that quite a bit in the RV industry where sometimes the older stuff works and lasts much longer than newer things. Yep. <laughs> but I think the LED is a problem worldwide, not just in RVs or category wise. So the real solution is just to keep your fixtures in good shape. Don't abuse them. Don't break those lenses. Sometimes, you know, you can't get a lens after a few years. And if you do have to upgrade it, definitely buy one where it has a twist in bulb that you can replace it if it does fail. That way you can keep that fixture. In most cases, the fixture doesn't even matter what it looks like. Right. They don't notice it. They're on the <laughs> ceiling. As long as the lights work, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And if you have friends in your RV that don't like your light fixtures, well, find new friends. Exactly. Shoot them out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it sounds simple, but it's not always simple to do. But that's my recommendation on LED bulbs and the problems we're seeing today and how you can overcome them in your RV. And, of course, these principles will apply to your house as well. Now, this takes us to the next stop, the moment Alexis has been waiting for. Because <laughs> today we are going to go to <laughs> Montana. Yes, here. <laughs> Montana. Imagine that. We go to Montana a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> well, it is one of the nicest looking states. That might sound, you know, 
prejudice there, but it well, is. it is. I live here. <laughs> so I got to defend the state. <laughs> so Montana is an awesome state. So today we're going to go to Makoshika State Park. Mm -hmm. So Alexis, what made you pick Makoshika State Park? Well, first of all, it's just really fun to say Makoshika. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was kind of just searching around for state parks in Montana and this one really stood out. I actually had never heard of it before, which shame on me. I've lived here my whole life, but I really have not. Um, but apparently it's Montana's largest state park, which is kind of cool. Um, it's high desert, so it's not the mountainous region that we live in. It's very different, but there's really, really cool rock formations in it. Um, there are trails to hike and bike. You can look around at the um, surrounding uh, area you can camp in it and there's just tons to see right so the high desert is on the eastern side of montana that's right so it's a completely different look than the western side yeah. you know, it doesn't <laughs> have pine trees they don't exist <laughs> but there's sand dirt and rivers and such there's things to do and see there mm -hmm. so this sounds pretty cool sounds like a nice place i kind of like that high desert anyway so it attract me to it yeah yeah <laughs> and so what is there to do there as far as uh but you mentioned some activities, but of course, after those activities, you got to eat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what is there for food? Well, um, it is a smaller area, so there weren't a whole lot of options, but there's a place called the Beer Jug that got really good <laughs> reviews. <laughs> Apparently, their food is amazing, so <laughs> might be somewhere to check out. Um, the Gustav, I think I'm saying that right. That's a pizza place, so if you're a pizza lover. And then there's Los, Los Amigos, which is Mexican food. So All right. So Los Amigos sounds like a pretty safe name. Mm -hmm. Now the, the Gustav doesn't sound like a pizza place. It does not. Like a German whatever. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> you don't drink beer till oblivion. <laughs> Whereas the beer jug, you drink enough beer, whatever they serve is going to be good. Exactly. Right? So there, there you, you go. go. <laughs> so it sounds like all three of them are good. And Mexican mm -hmm. food, you can't go wrong with. You know, right. most of the time. Right. <laughs> All right. So now are there places to stay for RVers to use their RV? Yeah, there's a couple of different campgrounds. I always try to list at least three um, that are reviewed pretty well. Um, there's Kane's Campground. There's Riverview RV Park and Whispering Trees RV Park. And obviously in those last two, you know, you can take your RV, but in Kane's you can too. So I always like to list ones for RV friends. Make sure it's RV friendly. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we're looking out for you, people. That's right. <laughs> Making sure you got the best places to eat, drink, and sleep. recreate. <laughs> yeah. And, and sleeping off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you see, there's always recreation everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. Every spot there's recreation. There's always food. Yep. So you see how that works. You can eat to your heart's content. Then you go recreate. Yeah. Yep. Walk off all that food. Exercise it off. Yep. But while you're having fun. Yes. All right. So we're also helping you not exceed the load limit of your RV. You know, that way you, you, know, you don't go there and gain a bunch of weight. Now you can't take your RV back and you exceed the load. No. Oh, man. That's right. <laughs> All right. So awesome. So again, you can go to the next stop on the smartrver.com website and check out Makoshika State Park mm -hmm. and all the other next stops that we have talked about and upcoming ones they're always on the website long before we talk about them yep. so it's a great resource just whet your appetite i know every time we talk about this stuff alexis and i are like hey you know i want to go there i want to go here uh -huh. you know? yep <laughs> yeah so it kind of gets that you know going so it's pretty cool so check it out it's a smart rv.com so now rv envy you know, there's nothing cooler than having an RV where you got all the nice little gadgets. It doesn't necessarily have to be like the big old massive RV that you pull in the RV park and everybody's looking at it, you know. <laughs> it's just the RV with all the cool stuff on it or the cool things for you. Yeah. You know, who cares what everybody else thinks? But, you know, always have those things and someone will be envious of it. That's why we call it RV envy. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk about backup cameras. Now, I was going to focus primarily on Furion backup cameras <clears throat> as the brand here, but I've changed that. Um, I just got a sample in of a Magnadyne backup camera. Oh. And Furion and Magnadyne, um, both of them, RVs come pre-wired for both brands. Okay. So that's something that's changing uh, backup cameras or observation systems as they're more you know, likely to be called today mm -hmm. because it's not just about backing up. It's about seeing things as you're going down the highway. Right. 
what's going on behind you, on the side of you, depending on what options you get. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do videos on both brands. So we'll get those on the website, hopefully before this episode comes out. We're trying to stay ahead of this. But videos are coming out on our YouTube channel at the Smart RVer. So it's YouTube at the Smart RVer. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the Smart RVer podcast. I need to get this straight. But <laughs> we've got too many names of too many things. But it's on YouTube. And there's a link to it on the Smart RVer dot com. Yes. You know, Smart RVer dot com has links to everything. Mm -hmm. So if I get it messed up, just go there. <laughs> Always works better without me in the loop. <laughs> so observation can systems or cameras or backup cameras whatever you want to talk about or whatever you want to call them yeah you know, they're just not about backing up anymore i remember the old days when you know someone had a backup camera that was a big thing you know they were spending thousand fifteen hundred bucks maybe two grand you know cables that have to be run you know these big motor homes that have 40 50 60 feet of cable it was quite a thing you know I was like wow that was really something to be envious of you know but you know, they worked, but when you retrospect, they were junk. You know, they're horrible looking monitors, big clunky things. When they failed, they failed miserably, you know, and like that thing, you just throw it in the trash and you never replace it. Oh, wow. You know, unless you really fell in love with it, it was something like maybe the camera is replaceable and it's inexpensive, but you'd probably never fix it. Just throw it away. Right. Or just let it sit, you know? Yeah. When you sell your RV, yeah, it has a backup camera doesn't work but it has one you know so today they're a lot more compact they're friendlier they're wireless so you don't have to have all the wiring and when you're going down the road if you're pulling a let's say a trailer <clears throat> doesn't matter fifth wheel travel trailer you can have a camera on the rear you can even buy cameras to mount on the side next to your clearance lights and that's how they're powered is from the clearance lights because they don't really have the same power requirements as the old cameras. So you just run with your clearance lights on and it powers up the cameras. And then they talk to the monitor on your dash wirelessly. So it's much more effective today, much friendlier, much RV friendlier, and they're easy to install in most cases. And there's a lot of different ones out there. And you really got to be careful what you buy. There is a brand called Halo View, which is still around, which I got behind it for a while because they were inexpensive and it seemed to work okay. But you had to run some wires on it that with an antenna. And the more I think about it, that's just lame. You're putting more holes in the roof. Yeah. So if so, Halo View is not the worst brand, but it's not a brand that I would support anymore. Mm. I revoke, remove the smart RV here seal of approval on that one. <laughs> oh, wow. So if you bought one, I'm sorry. No, they're not that bad. It's just they're, they're, they've gotten better. You know, there's mm -hmm. less expensive brands that have improved, like Magnadyne. They come in price-wise a little less expensive than a Furion. Okay. Um, Furion has taken a different approach versus the Magnadyne, but both of them are good quality cameras mm -hmm. or systems. So if you're looking for one, you know, there, there's a lot of brands out there. Just stay away from the junk. I would recommend Magnadyne or Furion, you know, look at a camera. In fact, the Magnadyne one, uh, the testing I've done so far, it works really well. The Furions we've installed, they work. So I'm more familiar with those, but the Magnadyne works really good so far in the tests we've done. In fact, the Magnadyne is probably going to go on the company trailer we bought which that's going to be a whole nother episode probably, nice. but it's, it's all about, um, everything we talk about is going on this RV. So the proof will be on the pudding. <laughs> everything we talk about will be on this RV. Mm -hmm. And there's a ton of stuff that we have planned for it. It's going to take two months to get everything done. That's how much changes we're going to do to it. Wow. So it's, and it's going to be decked out with everything that's cool. That's awesome. So talk about RV envy. Uh -huh. <laughs> So it's going to be nice. So, but that's just from me. Now, um, Furion is still a good brand, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so check them out. And like I said, we're going to do videos on them, break it down more, but obser rear observation systems are pretty darn cool these days mm -hmm. and they're getting dropping in price. You can get a good system for under 500 bucks. You can get a good system for under a thousand bucks, you know, under 800 bucks like Furion. They have a nice system for like $765. You know, it's regular retail. It's a great system. 
So check them out. If you don't have one, they're very, very handy to have. Mm. You know, just knowing what's going on behind you sometimes is so much better than trying to back up with one. Who cares? Yeah, I mean, you can back up an RV. Someone can help you with that. Mm -hmm. But if you're driving down the road and you get a blowout or start getting one, a tire starts separating, sometimes you can't see it from your tow vehicle. Right. Right. But you got a camera now, and all of a sudden you see rubber and stuff shooting off the off the road. Now you can definitely pull over quicker. Gives you an advantage. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that also reminds me that, you know, you need to have the TST tire minders on your trailer, and that'll help you. Yep. And there's another product coming up that we're going to be discussing is RV Defender, and that's for blowouts. Mm. Tire protection, for, you know, saves your trailer from blowouts so that's coming up too nice. we got a lot of things happening here but anyways the backup cameras or rear observation systems are definitely something you want to take a look at mm -hmm. and of course there'll be a link in this podcast to this to smart rv part center with the cameras there or just go to smart rv part center and look up for look up rear observation systems real simple all right, everybody, I want to thank you for coming by today, listening to the show. We truly appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to us on all the favorite channels, podcast channels, YouTube. You know, make us your go-to source for RV information for the do-it-yourselfer. So this is Eric Stark with the Smart RVer Podcast. It's been great hanging out with you today. If I don't see you on the road, let's connect at thesmartrver.com.